الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ومن استنى بسنته واقتفى أثره إلى يوم الدين وبعده uh, Welcome to the Friday حلقة in which we deal with the Quran trying to take uh, a thematic approach to the uh, surahs in the Quran and last week we dealt uh, with the story of the sons of Adam Habil and Qabil or Abel and Cain and we try to take some lessons uh, from it. Uh, I want to connect the story to the central theme of the surah. We said the the main theme in the surah revolves around uh, remaining true to one's agreements, observing and preserving one's agreements, and that this is a very important aspect of the divine message to humans. Actually, it's an underlying uh, principle of adhering to the truth because the relationship between humans and Allah is one of agreement is one of adherence to the agreement that humans made with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prior to coming into this world and then humans sort of re-engage with that agreement or um, activate and revitalize that agreement when a person commits to um, to Islam and they take their shahada they pronounce their shahada, which is actually an agreement, and they are supposed to remain true to it throughout their their their, their lifetime. And uh, the um, the act of uh, Cain or Qabil when he killed his brother was actually a clear vi violation to his agreement with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And the agreement with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala again reveals itself and manifests itself through many angles. Uh, the foundational one is what we have in the revelation which is the quran and the sunnah and we've been given the seed of this which is in our fitrah and which if we if we really dig deep down and reach its essence the fitrah uh, it's actually it's 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 the pure human nature without any external influences so so the story shows is, is actually a clear demonstration of how humans can violate and can go against and can break their agreement with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Throughout the surah you will find that Allah, everything, almost everything is addressed through the lens of observing the agreements, remaining true to them and not breaking from them. So we find the surah moves to another reference uh, towards uh, Bani Israel. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about uh, certain uh, aspects that in, in the human experience and this is basically spreading corruption like for example um, uh, robbers and um, burglars people who um, basically jeopardize the safety of a society by breaking into people's houses or by um, engaging in uh, robbery or highway robbery uh, people who frighten others people who steal people who commit this kind of, these kind of of um, of crimes against humanity allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specifies here what should be should be their punishment and this punishment punishment obviously should be conducted by the governing body by the government itself otherwise if everyone takes the law in their own hands it would be chaos and people are it's it's people are people are very biased so this is why it has to be done by the authority that is appointed to govern that state or or that that nation um, and Allah mentions this in the context of seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we'll find in verse number 35 a very beautiful verse where Allah says ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu ittaqullah wa bitagu ilayhi alwasila wa jahidu fi sabilihi la'allakum tuflihun all you who believe have taqwa, be conscious of Allah, be mindful of Allah. And seek the means that will bring you to Allah, that will lead you to Allah. And strive in that path so that you may be among the successful. And then Allah mentions, for example, uh, Allah here talks about the punishment of theft. Um, again, it just follows the same principle because, again, robbery, theft, frightening people jeopardizing people's lives spreading corruption mischief in the land uh, becoming a threat to society is a violation 
of the agreement between humanity and Allah because Allah placed humanity on earth to again live in the best way possible and they have been given the means to do that and they are required to abide by that and this is what the test of life is actually about that how truthful and loyal they will remain to this beautiful principle and this ethical moral uh, life code that is built in them and that is also given to them through divine instruction so Allah shows here that th these crimes that are committed and the reason why there is uh, punishments, there are punishments for them, is that these are great acts of violation. And violation means betrayal. And betrayal is very dangerous. And it leaks into many aspects of life. So if a person develops an attitude of betrayal towards agreements, so basically this is going to show itself or manifest itself sometimes in robbery, sometimes in theft, sometimes in cheating, sometimes in murder. And this is why you'll find criminals will commit different types of crimes. Why? Because once you develop this inner quality of freeing yourself from the moral commitment, then again, you have no reason, you have no preventive uh, uh, aspect or you have no preventive uh, elements within you that will hold you back from violating other people's rights if an opportunity arises. So if it's theft, if it's murder, if it's cheating, if it's uh, taking advantage of situations, if it's monopoly, um, if it's abuse, etc. So this is why in Islam you will find that these punishments, because there are people who have this moral judgment within them. They have this natural commitment. But not everyone has this, and not everyone remains true to that. Uh, so you still need for a society or for a nation to function in a healthy way, to be prosperous, to grow, so that people can fulfill the purpose behind their creation. Uh, you will need these kind of parameters. And this is why governments have prisons, they have a legal system, they have the court system, and, and they hold people accountable. It is their attempts to bring order and keep things stable in a society uh, otherwise if there is chaos if 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 there is no safety if people don't feel safe for themselves and safe for their wealth and their property then you know civilization becomes an impossibility but again there is nothing better than the law the divine law of the creator of humanity who really knows how you how you can handle how you can best handle this uh, human nature, when it goes uh, out of when it, when it goes out of order, when 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 it starts transgressing the limits, then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala uh, turns the attention of the Prophet ﷺ and the Muslims here to a very clear example of people who violated their agreements with Allah, and this is the people of the book. So Allah SWT says to the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, do not be saddened by the people who rush to disbelief. They rush to reject you and reject your message. Although in their books, in the scripture, the divine scriptures that, that had been given to them, uh, they, have, they had clear evidence about your arrival, about your message and about your book and about your instruction. And the fact that they should remain truthful to these books and these books command them to follow the final messenger and be obedient to him and follow the, the, the guidance, the divine guidance that will be that would be uh, sent down to him. So Allah SWT says to the Prophet, do not says, do not be saddened by that. It is their problem, it is their betrayal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As, as Allah SWT says to the Prophet, فَإِنَّهُمْ لَا يُكَذِّبُونَكَ وَلَكِنَّ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ يَجْحَدُونَ they're not rejecting you. They're not disbelieving in you. That's not the reality. Although it, it seems like this is the case. Their reality is that they are denying the signs, the clear signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's not about you. Don't don't take it in a in a in a don't take it personally. Then Allah starts exposing many manifestations of how they betrayed their agreements with Allah and their covenants with Allah. Allah mentions many details like how, for example, they cheat people and they take money that doesn't belong to them. In many ways, they resort to a lot of uh, 
uh, means, trickery, uh, cheating, etc. Um, and then Allah shows that Allah gave them the Torah and that they were supposed to remain truthful to it, but they actually changed it and they did not um, uh, they did not adhere to its pure essence and to, to its true message. And this is where Allah says in verse number 44, Those people who do not judge by what Allah revealed, these people, they, they are the disbelievers, meaning the, these are committing disbelief. Um, and then Allah in the in, in, in other verses Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says those who do not judge by what Allah revealed those are the wrongdoers الظالمون, these are the oppressors why again because what Allah revealed is the agreement that we have an agreement with Allah to follow that to live according to that and when you refuse to judge by that you have betrayed your agreement obviously to various to va to varying extents so Every time a person commits a sin, they have actually strayed from that agreement. But that doesn't mean they become disbelievers. Just become, it just means they have transgressed against themselves and against their agreement with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they can fix that and come back. But if a person takes their way of life uh, as to, in, in a way to just com completely turn away from the guidance of Allah, from the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then these people are obviously, you know, they are living in disbelief. And, in, and, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, verse number 47, لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا The people, who, those who do not judge by what Allah revealed, these are al-fasiqun. Al-fasiq means someone who um, diverged from the path, people who left the right path. Uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just says to the Prophet sallam, you hold on to what Allah revealed to you. This is verse number 48 and, uh, and, and the subsequent verses. Um, and Allah says in verse number 50, Do they want the judgment and the rules of ignorance, of, of people of ignorance, people of misunderstanding? Who is better than the Allah in terms of judgment for people who truly have faith and certainty in meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And it shows why we are supposed to be uh, committed to our agreement with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this is the best agreement this is the best way of life it's not like Allah made an agreement to make us feel bad or to ruin our lives it's just this agreement is in our best interest it was designed it was made for us and the irony is that we, we, we are the ones who turn away from it and then Allah also addresses the whole concept of dealing with the people of the book here and there is um there are parameters here or there is instructions from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as to how to handle the people of the book. Like, do not take them as your close allies. And again, sometimes people want to see this in a sectarian way. But again, this is based on the principle of the surah, which is people who have betrayed the divine message that has come to them. They've changed it. They tampered with it. Uh, they have selectively chosen different parts to follow certain parts and ignore other parts and change other parts. This kind of attitude you don't want to take someone like that as your closest ally, especially if you are on a mission to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to, 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 to act out justice in your life. Why? Because when you rub shoulders with people like that and they become your closest allies, they become the closest people to you, you know, this attitude of theirs will rub off on you. So this is something to be, not to be taken lightly. And... Uh, and, and, and also since they, and Allah says, don't take them as close allies, because when you have allies, basically, you have a mutual defense, mutual defense agreements with them. You have a sense of trust towards them. People who betrayed Allah, their creator, subhanahu wa ta'ala, don't you think betrayal has become a personal trait of theirs? So you should be careful. You should be aware. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the many times in the Quran, that when they give an agreement, they go about to break it later on. Um, yeah, and Allah says that they take your religion as uh, in mockery. They basically, they, they, they start mocking your religion, making fun of your religion. Again, that shows the sense and the attitude of betrayal. So you need to be, 
you need to be very careful and intelligent as to how you deal with these with these people it's not just like blind instructions here from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the contrary there is a if you like and I'm using the word loosely there is some kind of a philosophy there's some kind of a clear mindset here, here with all the logic behind it then Allah shows how they say you know um, things that are inappropriate about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like in verse number 64 Allah says how they say that Allah acts miserly or Allah is, is miserly billah. like Allah is not generous basically Allah doesn't want to spend time Allah doesn't want to spend on his creation because Allah fears poverty something like that okay, no, this is these are blasphemous words right and Allah says even prior to that in verse number 61 62 you will see that Allah says many of them they actually they're very quick to go to to sins to evil acts and to acts of oppression udwan, and to eating other people's rights taking other people's rights and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says you know had these people remained true to their their books the book that was the divine revelation that was given to them we would have provided them with so much we would have blessed them from above them from underneath them and Allah says some of them are people who remain true minhum ummatun muqtasada in verse number 66 in surah al-ma'idah um, some of them remain minimally truthful to to the, the divine revelation but most of them have you know take, have, have gone away or have gone straight away from it then Allah SWT reminds the Prophet SAW to remain true to his mission in verse number 67 Allah says yeah, O oh, messenger convey what was revealed to you from your Lord that's your agreement with Allah that's your mission you are supposed to remain truthful to that agreement you're supposed to fulfill that mission if you don't do that then you have not fulfilled your mission and Allah protects you from people meaning here Allah protects you from from being murdered by people until you obviously fulfill your mission so in the course of fulfilling your mission you are protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from being murdered um, then Allah addresses the people of the book Allah says to the to the Muslims to address the people of the book that you are upon nothing until you establish the revelation the book that was given to you from Allah um, yeah so Allah still talks about how they um, did not uh, fulfill and they failed to remain true to their agreements with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how they actually not only that but they they, they introduced um, inappropriate things to what is supposed to be divine revelation uh, by by claiming that Allah is Al-Masih ibn Maryam A'udhu Billah that, that Jesus is Allah A'udhu Billah um, or that there is uh, the, the Trinity that Allah the nature of Allah is of three you know facets or three dimensions or whatever Allah shows this within the context that this is a departure from their agreement it's a fundamental departure from their agreement with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and their obligations towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so Allah addresses these issues but also Allah shows some nuances here in how he treats them um, Allah shows who among the people of the book will show the most enmity and who among them will show some leniency and some tendency towards the truth you will find this in verses number 82 um, to v verse number 85 and then Allah SWT addresses the believers the Muslims here themselves Allah says do not make haram do not make impermissible what Allah made lawful for you and this is an act of transgression against the against the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it shows again you remain true to Allah by obeying him ya ayyuhalladhina amanu awfu bil uqud the first verse in the surah or you who believe remain truthful to your agreements to your covenants to your promises then Allah talks about the concept of oath or swearing by Allah if you say wallahi I will do this or I will do that that you are this is an agreement and you are supposed to be 
uh, true to it. And then here it is in these verses where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually talks about the prohibition of drinking intoxicants or consuming intoxicants and gambling and casting the lots and other 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 prohibited deeds. Um, and Allah says Shaitan uses these things in order to uh, bring about enmity among you. So Allah says, since you are obligated to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you have this agreement with Allah, Allah says these things are prohibited for you. Then Allah also explains for, for, for Muslims why these things are prohibited. Because shaitan brings about enmity and hatred among people by means of these things. And we know how much, uh, you know, how many problems are, are generated by the consumption of intoxicants and by gambling uh, and how much destruction is brought into people's lives through all of these things and how ultimately these things take you away from the remembrance of Allah so it takes you away from your mission takes you away these things take you away that they basically jeopardize your capacity or your ability to fulfill your agreements with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then Allah here addresses the concept of Hajj and Umrah where a person enters into a state of Ihram which actually was mentioned early in the surah and the early in the early few few verses of the surah but here allah shows that this is an agreement between you and allah when you are in a state of ihram you are not supposed to hunt and this is an agreement between you and allah and you are supposed to observe it um, allah talks about the kaaba in verse number 97 and why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the kaaba why allah established the kaaba that it is actually a place for humans to worship Allah and also it's a means for them to flourish um, there are beautiful principles here like in verse number one Allah says you know the good and the filthy the good and the evil they, they are not equal and they will never be equal even if the evil seems to be more abundant or seems to have the upper hand or seems to have power or seems to have wealth they're not equal because the truth has intrinsic value whereas evil intrinsically lacks value so no matter how many people are upon evil or how much wealth they have or how much power they have it doesn't make evil equal to good or to the truth so the tr truth has its its intrinsic value uh, so this is some so Allah takes us away now Allah takes us away from the immediate reality which sometimes could give us the impression that when something is more powerful then it's more evident or it is coveted and respected but Allah says no sometimes you need to zoom out of this uh, immediate reality and see the bigger picture even if evil seems to have the upper hand or it seems to have power it seems to have more abundance and more resources it doesn't mean it's better it doesn't mean it is going to prevail the reality is evil and good are never equal good will always have the upper hand good will always be better um, so you when you take sides you take sides sides with good because that's where your agreement with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so don't let you know what happens in life apparently in life don't let that uh, alter your scales and make you uh, make the wrong choices <clears throat> yeah so there's some reference again to certain practices that were uh, among you know the Arabs who were supposedly following the religion of Ibrahim and Ismail السلام, but they actually departed they did not remain true to, to these things um, eventually Allah SWT, and I think we can close today we can close actually today the surah surah uh, al-ma'idah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows what's going to happen to people who remain true to their covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what happens to those people who have violated this agreement with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says starting with number verse uh, 109 When Allah gathers all the messengers and Allah would say to them how were you received by your people? They would say oh Allah we don't know you are the one who knows everything and you know the unseen because prophets some of them they didn't know exactly what happened after their departure as well 
So they would say, oh Allah, you are the one aware of everything. Um, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking them, did you convey, so Allah is holding the messengers accountable now. Did you convey my message? Did you fulfill your agreement with me? And how did your people respond? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here shows that he addresses Prophet Isa alayhi salam, Jesus, son of Mary, peace be upon him. Allah will say to him, remember my favor upon you and upon your mother that I supported you with uh, Jibreel, the angel, that you spoke to people when you were um, a little baby, soon as, when you were an infant. I gave you the capacity and the ability to speak and even the capacity to speak later on as an older person and that's obviously with the return of Isa alayhi salam towards the end of time and I taught you the book and I taught you wisdom and the Torah and the Gospels, the Injil and I made you able to shape from clay to shape birds and to blow the soul into them so that they come to life with my permission so I, what that means Allah creates through Isa alayhi salam and that I gave you the capacity to heal different illnesses, diseases and I even gave you the capacity to bring some of the dead to life and I protected you from the harm of Bani Israel when you brought the truth to them, when you brought my signs to them and they said this is magic. And then I'm the one who inspired your disciples to follow you and believe in Allah and believe in you. Uh, and then Allah mentions the story of when the, when the disciples of Al-Masih they asked for a meal to be given to them, to descend upon them from, from the heavens. And Isa made that, uh, uh, made that appeal to Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down uh, some sort of a, uh, a feast for them Allah sent it down to them as some sort of a covenant and agreement that this is a sign from Allah so that you believe firmly and you remain firm upon the truth and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala eventually says in verse number one uh, 116 and Allah says to Isa السلام, did you tell the people to take you and your mother as gods besides Allah? Isa alayhi salam would say, Subhanak, qala Subhanak, glory be to you, O Allah. Ma yakunu li an aqula ma laysa li bihaq. How could I say something that I have no right to say? Something that I'm, I'm, not, meant, I'm not meant to say, it's not even true. Had I, if I said it, you would know it. And obviously, Allah knows all about this, but this is a conversation for people to listen to on the day of judgment so the truth is clearly stated in front of them you know what's in myself and i don't know what's in yourself you are the one who knows everything i only told them what you had instructed me with i only told them what you had commanded me that worship allah my lord and your lord so eventually allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse number 119, Allah says, this is the day on which the truthful will be benefited by their truthfulness. Those who remain true to their covenant with Allah, to their fitra, to the message that came to them through the messengers, those who remain true to that, they will reap the fruits of that truthfulness. They would get paradise, they would get gardens under, under which rivers flow, they would dwell there forever. Allah will be pleased with them and they would be pleased with Allah. And this is the ultimate success. Then Allah says, to Allah belongs the dominion of the heavens and the earth and everything in them. And Allah is capable of everything. So this sort of seals the surah beautifully. And it shows, and this surah was, was one of the latest surahs to be revealed. Actually, some of the verses... Uh, where Allah says, today I've completed my favor upon you and chosen Islam for you as your religion. Um, this actually, this is towards the end of the life of the Prophet. And there was even some discussion among some scholars that this could be the last verse ever revealed to Prophet Muhammad But most likely, it's probably the one before the last. 
So what, what this shows that Surah Al-Ma'idah was revealed at a later stage in the life of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and it shows of frames Islam, the relationship between us and Allah and frames even the state of the people of the book and the state of all other people, all of humanity within the frame of agreement that this life is really about an agreement, it's about the fulfillment of an agreement between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a reference to that agreement will appear inshallah in uh, Surah Al-A'raf that we will come to bi uh, so, so everything about our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is about fulfilling an agreement, is about being truthful and it shows the ethical dimension of this whole thing of adhering to Islam and remaining true to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's a warning for the people to the people of the book that they are meant to be true to the scripture that was truly sent to them before it was changed before it was uh, tampered with and uh, this basically sort of again frames everything uh, about our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with this we have sort of taken a thematic approach to Surah Al-Ma'idah inshallah next week uh, we will move on to start talking about Surah Al-An'am which is a very profound uh, surah and talks heavily about aqidah the soma talks about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps us know more about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so inshallah we were, we're going to start with this uh, next week bi idnillahi ta'ala jazakumullah khairan for joining us and uh, see you next week bi idnillah wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh